Hello, 3D printing friends. Today, we're going to make some Halloween decorations for our printers. Stick around and I'll show you what I have in mind. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. So the Halloween decorations that we're making are extruder visualizers, and this is a non-Halloween extruder visualizer, just so you get an idea of what they are. These attach magnetically, got a little disc magnet on the back, these attach magnetically to the spindle of the extruder stepper motor, and as the printer prints, they spin around. They're super simple to make, and you can be as creative as you want to with them. Now, we're gonna design these in Tinkercad and print them out. You might dismiss this as something silly or useless, but they do in fact serve a purpose, or they do for me anyway. And by watching how fast the visualizer spins, you can get an idea of how much filament is being pushed through the nozzle of your printer. And if your extruder is skipping, you'll see the visualizer snap backwards every time it clicks. So like I said, we're gonna design these in Tinkercad, but because I'm not the world's greatest artist, we're gonna be using Halloween designs from someone more talented. The designs that we're using were created by Thingiverse user UKCat, and I've got a link to his Thingiverse page down here in the description. When you modify a model, it's called a remix, or at least it is on Thingiverse. And when I'm done with these, I will post them as remixes, so it's clear that I'm modifying another person's work rather than claiming I was the original creator of it. And of course, there are links to the remixes in the description as well. Now remember I said these attach magnetically? These are the magnets that we're using. These are eight millimeter diameter, four millimeter thick disc magnets. I bought a pack of 30 of these on Amazon for about seven bucks, and I've got a link in the description for those as well. Now our design is gonna have to take that size into account, because what I think I'm gonna do is create a one millimeter deep recess in the back of the extruder visualizer for that magnet to sit in. So the designs that we're gonna use from UK Cat are a jack-o'-lantern, a cat, and a spider. Now remember, you can pick out different designs for your extruder visualizers if you want to. This is all for fun, so make it yours. All right, now let's get into Tinkercad and get started. Now we're gonna start by designing a base. And this is just a disc onto which we will place our chosen design. And it's gonna have a place on the back to glue in the magnet. So we'll drag a cylinder out onto the work plane. And like I usually do with cylinders, I will immediately set the number of sides to 64 to get the smoothest possible cylinder. Now I want this to be two millimeters high and a diameter of about 40 millimeters is what I want. Now the next thing that we need is a cylinder that's a hole to make a cutout for the magnet. And I want it to be a millimeter thick. And remember the magnets are eight millimeters in diameter. So we need to set our diameter. You'd think you just want to set it to eight millimeters, but that's gonna pose a problem. And let me show you why. Here is an eight millimeter diameter circle. This represents our magnet. See, when your 3D printer is told to move along a particular path, it does so with the nozzle centered over that path. So if you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the printer is going to follow this path, but half of the nozzle's width is going to be inside the circle and half of it is going to be outside. Now what that means is you have half of a nozzle width taken off of the radius of the circle, which means that you end up with a full nozzle width taken off of the diameter of the circle. So when you try to print a eight millimeter diameter circle, you end up with something that is 7.6 millimeters in diameter, and then the magnet isn't going to fit. The way to work around that is to increase the diameter of the circle that you're going to print. And you want to increase it in such a way that you allow for that extra 0.4 millimeters and then maybe just a smidgen extra so that if the magnet is a little bit bigger than it's supposed to be, it'll still fit. And because we're gluing it in place, it's okay if the hole is just a little tiny bit bigger. So in order to get this red area outside of where the magnet is supposed to be, we need to set our diameter uh, at a minimum to 8.4 millimeters, but I wanted an extra 0.1 millimeter border all the way around that, so I set it to 8.6 millimeters. And so that red circle is the path that the nozzle is going to follow, 
and the area inside is where the magnet is going to go. And so you can see, this is our magnet, eight millimeters in diameter, and there's just a very slight border all the way around it, just an air gap. And that will accommodate the magnet nicely. So let's get back over to our other design, and we will change this diameter from eight millimeters to 8.6 millimeters. And that is gonna do what we want it to do. Now, if I select both of these items and use the alignment tool to line them up in their X and Y axes, and then group them together, what we end up with is a nice disc that has a cutout underneath for the magnet. I'm gonna move this up over here for now. And because we have three designs, I'm gonna duplicate this two more times so that we'll have enough bases for these. And there we go. The next thing I want to do is import the designs that we're going to put on top of these. And remember earlier, I mentioned that we're gonna do a jack-o'-lantern, a cat, and a spider. So let's import those now. Start with the jack-o'-lantern. Then we will import the spider. And we will import the cat. There we go. I'm gonna to switch to orthographic and top view so we can see these a little bit better. You'll notice that each one of these is larger. This is uh, 50 and a half millimeters wide. This one is 54 and a half millimeters wide. This one is 58 and a half millimeters wide. All of these are bigger than the disc that we want them to go on. So we need to resize them. Now these discs are 40 millimeters in diameter. And I think leaving a two millimeter border all the way around would, would give a nice effect. So if we resize these so that they are no larger in any dimension than 36 millimeters, that should fit the way we want it to. Now, if you hold the shift key down while you are resizing, it will resize proportionally. So we can get this to about uh, 36 and a quarter is close enough to 36. And we'll do the same with the cat. and with the spider. Okay. Now, I want these to be a millimeter thick. Let me switch back off of orthographic view and we'll zoom in on this a little bit. I only want these to be a millimeter thick. So we'll resize the height on these. There we go. And because they are going to sit on top of those discs and the discs are two millimeters thick, we need to raise them up off the work plane by two millimeters. Now we can get these things centered on the discs. So if we select both of these and use the alignment tool, we can align these in the X and Y axes and we'll do the same for the cat. And we'll do the same for the spider. Now, if we look at these from the top, you can see that there are still some adjustments that we can make. We want these to be visually centered and not geometrically centered. So what that means is this pumpkin, the majority of it is in the body and there's a little bit in the stem, but when you tell it to line up in Tinkercad, it takes the entire, um, this entire dimension into account when it centers. So we need to bump that up just a smidgen. And the cat, we need to bump down just a little bit to get it to fit nicely. And the spider can probably come down a little bit too. I'm thinking this cat might want to be a little tiny bit smaller. 
Now, having adjusted that, I need to adjust the height and make it a millimeter. Now, I want the cat and the spider to print in black. Now, the stuff that I'm setting here is not going to affect the color that these print in. This is just for our reference. And I just want to see what these are going to look like when they print. I think I want to print the jack-o'-lantern on a black disc. So it'll look like that. And I want to print the cat and the spider in black on a orange disc. That way we're only ever dealing with two colors. But it's Halloween and those are good Halloween colors. So these are going to look about like this. I think these will turn out nice. All right. Now we need to group these together so that they remain one object, because if you try to grab it and move it around, right now they're separate things. Let me undo that. So if I highlight both of the components for that particular one and group them, it becomes one item. Now, you'll notice that what happens in Tinkercad when you group things together is they all take on one color because it's a single object. Tinkercad remembers the last colors that something had, though, before you group them. So if you turn on the multicolor checkbox under the color, it will show you the individual colors of the thing. But it now behaves as a single object. Now, that does not affect printing. So if I group these items here together and set them to multicolor, it's still one STL, or it's not an STL yet, it's still one object. But it has, the, ob the component objects have their original colors. So again, setting things to multiple colors and grouping them together does not, in and of itself, translate to any kind of slicer settings that would let you print these in multiple colors. But what you can do is you can pause your printer right after it finishes printing this disc. And the disc finishes at a two millimeter layer height. You know, once you've got enough layers to reach two millimeters, it's done with the disc. And then it starts printing the design. If you pause the printer and swap the filament, in this case, if you swap from orange to black, and then resume the print, the printer continues printing but now it's printing in black and it prints the black cat on the orange disc. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So for now, we need to export these items out. Oh, and you know what? I never did change this document from Dazzling Blore Stantia to something a bit more descriptive, like Halloween Extruder Visualizers. So I'm going to export each one of these. So I'm just going to export the jack-o'-lantern and I will export the cat and I will export the spider. And now we're done in Tinkercad and we can switch over to a slicer and get these things sliced and work on printing them. Okay, here we are in our slicer. You can use whatever slicer you want. I'm using a Slicer Prusa Edition, and I'm gonna be printing at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. That will, uh, that will be important in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take our jack-o'-lantern that we exported a little bit ago from Tinkercad and drop it in here. So there it is, and we can rotate that around a little bit. It's kind of hard to make out the detail because everything is all just one color. And everything is one color because this is a single color or a single object. But what we're going to do is, let me go ahead and slice it so that we can look at the preview. So in the preview where you can see the slices, you can see how the jack-o'-lantern design is printed on top of the base. And when you get to a certain point, in this case, because this is a two millimeter thick base, at the two millimeter level, that's the last layer of the base. And then the next layer at 2.2 millimeters is the start of the design. So at 2.2 millimeters, 
In order to get two colors here, we're gonna print the base in black and the jack-o'-lantern in orange. At 2.2 millimeters, we need to pause the printer, remove the black filament, and insert the orange filament, and then resume the print. You can do this manually by watching your printer, and when you see that it has finished printing the base and has just started to print the outline of the jack-o'-lantern, you can manually pause your printer and swap filament. But there's a little bit easier way. Prusa has a color print tool on their website. And what it allows you to do is throw a G-code file in and tell it where you want to do a pause so that you can change the color on the, on the print. And then you can re-download the modified G-code and print that. And that's what we're gonna use because it's so simple to use. So here we can see on all of these, we're gonna be changing our, our filament at the 2.2 millimeter layer. So I'm gonna export this G-code and I will just save that out right there. And so then after we've exported this, we'll switch over to our web browser and use Prusa's color print tool to modify our G-code. Okay, here is Prusa's color print tool, and it's just at prusaprinters.org slash color hyphen print. So when you get there, scroll past the video, and there's a little section on the page that says drop G-code. So we'll take our G-code file and drop it in there. And it recognized it as slicer or slick 3R code. And we're doing standard. We're not doing multi-material because we don't have a multi-material unit on the printer. We're gonna add a color change. And remember, we're gonna do that at the 2.2 millimeter layer. So right there is where our color change is gonna happen. And what this is gonna do is simply insert a pause command in the G-code. And then we'll download our G-code all over again. And that downloaded file is the one that we're going to print. So now that we have that, we can start that printing. Okay, well, I've got the printer already loaded with black filament because that's the color of the base for the extruder visualizer. And I've got this orange filament standing by because that's going to be the color of the jack-o'-lantern. Well, to make things simple, I'm just gonna put this file on an SD card and move it over to the printer and then we can get the print started. So here's where that pause command in the G-code kicks in. The Prusas will raise the Z-axis up and move the print head away from the print. And then you can eject the existing filament, load the new filament, and grab any little danglers that may be hanging down right before the print resumes. And there is our completed extruder visualizer. Let's get it off of the build plate and take a look at it. Okay, here it is. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, I like the way it turned out. We've got the spot back here for the magnet. I don't know if you can see that. There it is right there. So we'll put a little drop of CA glue in there. There we go. And we'll stick the magnet in. And then when that dries, we can put it on the printer. So the extruder visualizer just snaps into place magnetically. And so you can see how it works. I will eject some filament. And then I'll load some filament back in. Okay, we're nearing the end, so this is the part of the video where I say those three little words you always want to hear. Like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> These three things really do help the channel. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down. But either way, please leave your thoughts in the comments. 
If you like the content I'm producing and you want to support the channel with a one-time micropayment, you can buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. I have links in the description for both of those. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so by clicking the BB3D icon right over here and ring that bell to be notified when I release new videos. Oh, and speaking of videos, here's one YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to watch my visualizer while I print something cool. You do the same. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.